Good afternoon, dear colleagues, dear Mr. Secretary General, Monsieur le Commissaire, um, and everybody, servicemen, servicewomen, representatives of industry. I'm very happy to welcome you here today in Eindhoven. I think that what you're seeing here the Netherlands Air Force Air, Air Mobility Command, and also, of course, the European capital of military and tra air transport, is what we would call a solid international hub. Recently, I spoke to one of our pilots, a Dutch pilot, Peter Tanking. He has completed over 3,000 flights in the F-16 fighter jet, also during combat missions. As a matter of fact, in 1999, he was the first and only Dutchman to take down a Serbian MiG over Kosovo. And he told me that for some pilots, air-to-air -air refueling is a moment when their adrenaline keeps pumping. But for him, it's a moment of tranquility uh, in the midst of a demanding and heavy-duty job. And I think this serves as a metaphor for this occasion. We're living in geopolitical turmoil. But today, we're taking a moment, just a moment, to appreciate this milestone and to refuel each other with praise, but also with ideas, before setting off onwards and upwards. And first of all, I'd like to thank Colonel Jurgen van der Biesen. He um, spoke to us just now, the commander, of the team, but also a pilot within this multinational, multi-role tanker transport unit. And I want to congratulate him and all the members of this unit for reaching this important milestone today. The MMU is an EU-NATO flagship project. It is what can happen if you join forces. It is what we are capable of when we pool and share capabilities. And the Netherlands is proud to be lead nation to this project. And I'm very pleased to see all MRTT partners here today. The institutions, the countries, and of course also industry. And I think we all know that these achievements were only made possible by the excellent support, host nation support, the supporting organizations. And one of them deserves to be extra highlighted. It was EDA that took the initiative to address this NATO and EU recognized shortfall back in 2011. And as we saw in the short video, in 2016, the Netherlands and Luxembourg signed up for this project. And today, seven years later, thanks to Belgium, we're signing a new memorandum of understanding for the acquisition of the unit's 10th aircraft. Um, we have bases here in Eindhoven, but also in Cologne. And just in just a few years' time, the MMU has learned to crawl, to walk, and finally to run. And running it is. This unit was ready, but called upon on the 24th of February of last year, the day that Russia chose to invade Ukraine. It was among the first to deploy aircraft over Poland to bolster our presence on the east flank. And Colonel von der Biese, he was one of the pilots that flew that day. And up until now, the unit has flown over 170, sorry, 175 missions and delivered over 6 million liters of fuel to NATO fighter jets. And in August 2021, we remember that as well, the unit was ready when it was needed. When the world watched as Kabul fell into the hands of the Taliban, an MRTT aircraft showed that it's much more than merely a flying petrol station. From Islamabad, it provided its worth by flying Afghan citizens to safety in Europe. And today, here in Eindhoven, the third role of the multi multinational MRTT unit is exposed, and you will see one of the aircrafts in its medical configuration. So, dear friends, this is the way forward. This is what the future of defense cooperation should be like. And if we want to defend our countries, and if we want Ukraine to win this war, we have to invest together. We have to overcome national indu industrial interests. We have to jointly develop, procure, and operate our capabilities. And it will bring us a stronger European Union and a stronger NATO. So let this project be an inspiration 
for many more projects to come. And allow me to suggest a few. So one promising field is strategic air transport capability for EU military missions. And as we speak, seven EU members, including the Netherlands, are starting a pilot project and making flight hours available for this purpose. I'm also thinking of the idea of pooling airlift capability for outsized cargo, another recognized NATO and EU shortfall. And in the maritime domain, a cooperation to address the EU-NATO shortfall in sea lift, pooling and sharing like roll-on, roll-off ships. Three examples that, in my opinion, would enhance NATO and EU's capacity to act. Uh, but I'm sure there are many more. So let's accelerate, let's broaden and deepen our cooperation between the EU and NATO, between nations, organizations, and not to forget our partners from the defense industry. And in that respect, I'm happy to see that Airbus Defense and Space is represented here today. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, my final words are for you, the servicemen and servicewomen. You did an excellent job in difficult times. I wish you the very best in reaching the next goal, full operational capability planned for the end of next year. And I will now formally declare that the multinational MRTT unit has reached initial operational capability in its three roles, air-to-air -air refueling, air transport, and aeromedical evacuation. So, Colonel, uh, may I invite you to the stage? And by handing over this token to you, I declare the stage of initial operational uh, capacity as achieved and reached. Thank you very much. And Thank congratulations. You very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg. Minister Ullongren, uh, Commissioner Breton, uh, Commander Beeson, ministers, ladies and gentlemen, it's really a great honor to be here today. And a pleasure to be uh, here at the Eindhoven Air Base. Uh, and I welcome, of course, uh, the announcement that uh, this multinational fleet of tanker transport aircraft is now ready for a full range of uh, missions and uh, operations. Important for our security, important for what we do uh, together. These aircraft uh, will provide us with the world-class air-to-air refueling, air transport and air medical evacuation capabilities. Tanker aircraft uh, is uh, the backbone of Allied air power. They can support NATO operations, enabling fighter aircraft to stay in the air much longer. And they can transport wounded or sick personnel from any country in the world. One tanker aircraft uh, can uh, carry uh, up to six intensive care units, helping uh, to save lives. Most importantly, the fleet has already proven its uh, value. Since Russia's brutal invasion of uh, Ukraine, these uh, tanker transport aircraft uh, have helped to protect NATO's eastern flank. Last year alone, they flew, the fleet flew more than 500 missions, refueling hundreds of NATO fighter jets that keep Allied airspace safe. Outside of Europe, these aircraft have supported the evacuation of civilians and refugees from Afghanistan. They deployed uh, to the Indo-Pacific for exercises with key NATO partners, including Australia. And later this year, they will deploy to the Middle East to support operations against ISIS. So they have demonstrated that they can actually fulfill many different tasks. I want to thank um, the European Defence Agency, the Organisation for Joint Armament Cooperation and the NATO Support and Procurement Agency for working together to develop this state-of-the-art uh, fleet. 
This is an excellent example of how NATO and the EU working together to deliver critical capabilities for our members. Important for the European Union, important for NATO, but most of all important for our shared security. This initiative is also a concrete step towards reducing the shortfall in European air-to-air -air refueling capacity. Multinational procurement is a cost-effective way for allies to acquire essential military equipment. This also demonstrates that the European allies are stepping up for their defence and strengthening our shared security. So I thank the Netherlands for hosting uh, the base. I thank all the personnel who has made this uh, possible and look forward to working together with all of you to ensuring that we continue to deliver this extremely important capability together. I hope, uh, as the minister, that we are also able in the future to develop more initiatives uh, like this uh, in the coming years. Thank you so much and congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, EU Commissioner for Internal Market, Thierry Breton. Well, dear Minister Olenguen, Shakaja, uh, dear NATO Secretary General, Shayans, dear Minister, dear Ministers, I should say. Uh, I'm extremely happy to be here today. Uh, Minister Langren, thank you for the invitation. Uh, not only it's an honor, but uh, it's also a symbol. Uh, of course, uh, that's great, as the General Secretary said, that we are celebrating here also today a joint cooperation between EU and NATO. And by the way, I would like to say to the General Secretary that thanks to his leadership, we are doing better every and every day. And this is extremely important for our joint security. So thank you for your leadership on that. But coming back on the multinational MRTT, um, having uh, its initial operational capabilities declared today is quite, um, quite an, a considerable achievement. This is, of course, extremely important because it is a synthesis of what, when we work together, we can do at best in Europe for our defence, for our joint defence, for us and for our allies. Um, of course, considerable, considerable members of the EU working together, uh, of course, working also in research and development, innovation, manufacturing capacities. This is what we should do, and I would like also to thank uh, strongly um, the European Defence Agency which did a fantastic job here. So thank you very much. Of course, um, this program, which uh, will be operated by NATO, is also to be seen as an ever-increasing cooperation, as I said, between NATO and the EU. And by the way, it is fully consistent with the new declaration. But I would like to highlight maybe um, two or three aspects. First, on EU defense cooperation. We are making a rapid and major step forward for our integration. And of course, the European Defence Fund, which is up and running now, is one of an extremely important key element, I would like to say, up front, where we join our forces to uh, uh, work on joint programmes in terms of R&D. More than 8 billion today, and uh, we have invested 35 billion with uh, uh, 26 countries, which is what we want to create. I used to say often, we want to create, because it's needed, an affectious authoritatis for every member state, for their own defence industry, and then for our global defence. And we work, by the way, for many domains, land, sea, air, space, cyber. So, European cooperation in defence is definitely now up and running. But of course, uh, we need uh, also to, um, to, um, to buy together. And we learn it, especially in the past crisis. This is where we are together at the EU level, that we are stronger. And buying to lever, to, together is definitely something that we learn and that we are doing now at the level of EU. And this is, of course, the objective of EDIRPA. Um, 
But in the future, European strategic capabilities project, like the MRTT, will be developed also thanks to EU money, as I said. And it could be the case for the European fighter jets, the European battle tank, the European corvette, uh, the hypersonic missiles, or a European air shield system. This is definitely a game changer, benefiting to both EU, but of course also NATO. But while we are good at producing high capabilities, our defense industrial base, let's say in terms of production, uh, today we see this in ammunition, is not yet adapted, at least in volume and speed. In know-how, yes. In skills, yes. In expertise, yes, but not in speed and in volume. And as we will continue helping, of course, Ukraine to fight against the unjustified Russian aggression, Europe defense industrial production apparatus needs definitely to adapt and also quickly ramp up. And this is what we are doing for ammunition. We know this with the Minister of Defense. Uh, on Monday, we took a very important decision. This will be discussed today by our leaders. Uh, um, first, of course, um, uh, one billion uh, uh, to buy uh, ammunition from the stocks, one billion to have a, a, a tender to acquire ammunition at the uh, European level, and then, of course, making sure that we can increase and enhance our uh, industrial defense uh, industry. And on the ramp up, the Commission is definitely committed to um, also to use its own budget to speed up uh, this. And this is why, as you know, I'm visiting many factories today. And I could tell you that, yes, we have a very strong and vibrant uh, defense uh, industry in Europe, but it's time to enhance it. Last point, EU NATO cooperation. Uh, that's extremely important. As I said, um, uh, uh, of course, uh, the, the increased cooperation between EU and, and NATO. We can see this every day. Again, thank you, uh, Jens, for this cooperation. Uh, we work a lot already on uh, hybrid threats. Uh, we agreed now to further deepen our cooperation in the domain of cyber, space, uh, the protection, of course, of our critical infrastructure. And the fact that the European Defence Cooperation is progressing fast is, of course, good for NATO. Because, as I said sometime, and Jens, you remember that, at the EU, we, in the EU, we are NATO. We are now soon 23 members. Uh, so the stronger we will be in terms of defense at the EU, the stronger we will be at the NATO level. So I keep telling that this cooperation is definitely vital for us and we take our fair share. So thank you very much for this uh, uh, very important uh, uh, event. Congratulations for the team. Uh, and, uh, and, 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 I, and I saw, uh, Minister, that you have a fantastic team that did a fantastic job. So um, it's a good day. It's a good day for us, for, for security in Europe. And we will need it. Thank you very much.